Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. On today's tutorial, I'm gonna paint some really nice, warm, vibrant colors in a kind of mountain sunset view with some colorful flowers and grass. Now, as usual, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad, but you could use a different app on a different tablet, and I'm pretty sure you could use plenty of the techniques that I'm gonna show you in whatever format that you choose. Having said that, there are some specific things with Procreate that I'm gonna talk you through now. So I'm using the default 8.4 canvas setting. So it's just a standard A4 within the app. I've not changed it at all. In terms of the brushes, I just use the default brushes that are on the app, and I don't change them at all. So within airbrushing, at the top of the list, I use the soft brush in this tutorial and the medium brush. And in addition to that, I'm going to be using the artistic leatherwood brush for some of the more the textures. In terms of the colours, I've already pre-selected some colours, which you can see in this area. And if you look in the description of this video, you'll find some codes that you can type in here. So if you go to the value, hexadecimal type each code one at a time, press enter. The colour appears up here. Then you can tap it together and put together the palette yourself or there is a link that takes you to my Patreon page where you can download the whole color file for free. You'll also find links to my Instagram where you can tag me if you have a go and post. And there's also a Facebook group with over 30,000 members now. Really great community where everyone shares feedback and gives advice. And also I've just started a TikTok account as well. All those links are in the video description. So with all that said and done, I'm gonna to go to my layer one, go to my colors, and I'm actually gonna choose the second color initially. And this is pretty much the background sky blue color that we're gonna use. And I'm just gonna drag it into that canvas area and drop, which flood fills the entire canvas. Now, please bear in mind, the colors that you see on the video tutorial will differ according to the device that you're watching it on. The camera that I use slightly oversaturates the color sometimes, which is why I do provide the codes and the file. So whatever colors you end up downloading and using are the colors that I'm using even if on camera it looks a little bit different while you watch it. Okay, so I'm gonna stay on the same layer, but I'm gonna to go to this darker gray. If you go on here, you can see it's a really grayed out blue. And I'm gonna to go to my airbrushing and soft brush. I'm gonna put it up to about 10%, 100% opacity. And I'm just gonna bring that gray up there at the top, maybe just do a little bit more. Then I'm gonna to go to my adjustments, my Gaussian blur, I'm going to blur it in really quite a lot to about the 80%. Then I'm going to create a new layer, stay on my soft brush, go to my colors and pick the third color in now, which you can see on the color disc is this orange, but it's quite a pastel version of it. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush to about 8% and I'm going to keep it at 100% opacity. And I'm going to aim for about halfway on my canvas. It doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line at all because we're going to blur it in again. So we'll go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and we're gonna blur it in to about the 50%. And I don't think it's strong enough. So I'm gonna to go to my layer, I'm gonna slide it, duplicate it, and it's gonna double the impact of that color now, which I'm happier with. If we want, because they're both called layer two, we can just top, tap on the top layer, press merge down here, and it's condensed them down to one layer again, which is great. I'm going to create a new layer. So this is layer three, go back to my colors, now, I am going to come back in a moment and do some more to the sky, but I just want to set a distant horizon line. Well, it's not quite the horizon line, but it's the distant mountain top. We're going to use the second color on the middle row. We're going to use the medium brush, but we're going to put it up to about 5% and just a little bit around the halfway point. We're going to create distant sets of mountains. They don't have to be exact at all. Just keep them a little bit rough. We're gonna go in there and define them a little bit better in time anyway, so just something to begin with. And then we can just drag and flood fill the area just below that. Then I'm gonna switch brush. I'm gonna stay on the same layer to my soft brush. I'm gonna put it up really quite big at about 20%, but the opacity quite low also at about 20%. I'm gonna to go to my colors again. I'm gonna pick the first color now, and using this brush, I'm just gonna start applying some of this just in a few touches here in the center area. I'm going to let it fade out at the edges. So I want it to be mainly concentrated in this center. And then I'm going to let it just disappear towards the edges. Now it's made quite an ugly edge. I was entirely expecting this. What I wanted to create is just the sense that it's getting darker over here, lighter in the center, a little bit more 
and then a little bit darker again at the edges. So I just wanted to make this a really simple process, which it will be. So we're going to go to the eraser this time, tap on the eraser, go to the medium brush, put the medium brush at about 3% and 100% opacity. And now we can go in and we can just remove. In fact, you might want to make it bigger just for this sky area initially, just to get rid of the bulk of it. And we can just remove all of the bit that we didn't want. Then we can reduce the size of the brush and then we can just a little bit more precisely now start to chip away at that top edge and we'll be left with that really nice transition. I mean, there's different ways that you can achieve this. There's certainly different tools that you can use, but I'm just trying to show you a way that probably you can apply to all sorts of different apps. And there's always more than one way to solve a problem like this, but this is just one way. It might be a little bit different than some of the other kind of masks tools that you might be familiar with. Okay, so we have our distant mountain range and sometimes I feel like it encroaches a little bit too high up. So we can go to the transform tool, go to the freeform, tap the little blue button at the top and we can just bring it down a smidge. I think that works a little bit better. Go back to our layers and create a new layer, go back to our colors and we are gonna use this second color again, but this time it's gonna be a little less interfered by this hazier, lighter color. We're gonna stay on the medium brush that we were using. We are gonna turn it down to the 2%. We'll keep it at the 100% opacity, but we could just start to bring this in a little bit. And again, we will interrupt this somewhat shortly, but we're just initially going to bring slightly more foreground set of hills, mountain tops, whatever you wanna call it. And because crucially I've created a line that joins up at both edges, it has created an enclosed area at the bottom, which means that I can drag into that area. Now, sometimes if it flood fills too much, keep your pencil on the screen and just slide it until it finds the point at which it's working better, like that. Okay, so I did say I was gonna go back and do some of the sky. We've got the basic setting now, so anything we do to the sky is gonna give, well, it has a context to make a bit more sense. So go back to the layer that had the sky color, and we're gonna tap the plus symbol to create a layer above that now. And I've put it behind the mountain layers just because if we start to do some texture, it could potentially overlap and go in front of the mountains. We wanna make sure it looks more in the distance so it's behind and underneath those mountain layers. So we're gonna to change to the soft brush again. We're gonna go back to our colors. Now I've used the first three already. We may also use them a little bit more later on. I'm gonna skip the dark one just for a second. I'm gonna to go to the light color. So the fifth color along. So we're on the soft brush as I just pointed out and we're gonna reduce it down to about 3%, the lower end of the 3% there and keep it at around 20%. And we're just going to start bringing in some light textures at the top. We could even have it a little bit smaller initially, so just into the 2%. And I've got a nice bank of cloud here that is comprised, made up of little points of texture. So you might be able to hear me tapping on the screen. Now bear in mind, I've got it set at 20%, but there's a difference between pressing on hard and pressing on lightly. I generally will press a little bit lighter, so bear that in mind. I'm just letting it pretty much kind of graze the surface of the screen. I tend to allow things to build up gradually. Now, if you're quite heavy handed, then you can adjust the opacity a little bit based on what I'm telling you, but I have to give you some sort of a benchmark. So I put it at 20% and I'm pressing quite lightly. Art is one of those things that there's so many variables, so many factors, which, you know, even when I see loads of people following my tutorials like this one, the, the amount of difference is amazing between one version and the next. And that is, you know, personal style approach, the way that you hold the, the pencil, like I say, the, the kind of natural pressure that you're inclined to add. There's just so many things that can affect it, which is always really fascinating. So even people following the same tutorial I can achieve quite a different look really, which is really interesting. And we'll just have it fragmenting a little bit off, maybe just a couple of points that are broken loose. I'm gonna turn it up to about 4% and down to about 10%. I'm just gonna allow it to fade off at the top edge of this bank of clouds. And maybe just have a bit more of a wispy, lighter, softer texture over here as well. Maybe reduce it down a bit more to the 3%. And I want this to be a little bit lighter. And then maybe just 
Suggestions of texture, you don't really need to do a lot with this light colour. A little bit will go a long way, because we are going to add some contrasting, real dark colours in a moment, which, you know, really will knock a lot of this back into the background, but it's good that it's not just flat in the background. And again, I'm pressing very lightly, so bear that in mind. Okay, I'm going to create another layer. Crucially, it's under the mountain layers again. Go back to my colours, and this time I am going to use the dark colour. So the fourth colour, I'm going to put it down to, where are we? The 2% size is good. I'm going to put it up to about 30%. So it's still relatively light, but you can achieve, as you can see, by going over it a couple of times, quite a dark colour still. So I'm just going to start bringing, we've got a much more foreground lower on the horizon, but closer to us slightly than the, the stuff in the background. So we're going to notice this a lot better. Now it is quite stretched out. We're going to have it as almost like stripes that run across the sky, but it is still pretty broken up and fragmented in places. So we've got a general movement that can go left to right, but I am making it up of, of dashes at the same time. Again, I'm stretching this kind of stripe all the way across so it can run the extent of the entire canvas but it is made up of dashes. And then I can go back in and just create more of a textured top edge, maybe even reduce the size of that brush to the lower part, 2%, just so it's a little sharper, a little bit more precise on that top edge. And we're just creating a little bit more texture along there. And again, we can have some fragmented sections. It's not all gonna be completely neat and confined. We're gonna get breakaway little tufts and textures. I think in some ways that slightly looser you are with this, I mean, take the time, but in some ways, if you, if you spend too long and labor on the little details on the edges, then almost it can look a little bit too contrived. I think there's some, something about the looseness that adds a quality to this. I don't know, it's a little bit of confidence, I suppose. Experience allows you to be a little bit more gestural, a little bit looser. I guess that comes with time, but keep practicing skies. They do take a little bit of practice and experience with. But once you start to kind of get some effects that you're happy with, you start to notice certain patterns and familiar things, even though it is totally kind of random in many ways, there are some things that tend to be similar about lots of different skies. And certainly your approach can start to take on some similarities between one sky and the next. Okay, I'm just gonna increase the size of the brush to about 4% and I'm just gonna start blocking in a little bit more of this down in this section, for example. Quite happy with it over on this side. I'm not gonna to do too much there. But I'm just gonna block in a little bit more over here. Then maybe reduce it back down to the 2%, and just perhaps even the smaller 2%, and just lightly start to tap in some more of the bottom edge of this. Again, we can have more breakaway. So I'm really, really, really lightly just tapping it along this bottom stripe. I mean, it might be as well actually to turn it down. So if you're gonna to struggle to depress really lightly, then just turn the opacity down. So I put it down to 10%, and I'm just bringing an even lower stripe and bank of cloud into this lower section. And I've got it down to the lower end of the 2%, whoops. And again, just allow it, allowing it to build up in textures. Maybe it can all sort of coalesce and join together here at this edge. Back up again to the 4%, I'm just gonna just whack this up to about 30% as well. Just merge these together, perhaps at this side. Okay, so that'll do for the dark texture for the most part. In fact, no, I'm gonna do a couple of just breakaway sections here. So I'm gonna put this down to the 2% again, keep it at the 30% opacity, and just have a, a couple of tufts that are really kind of closer. So you're gonna get a bulkier shape, more of a distinct fluffier kind of blob. I mean, you can really go into this and just define some of these edges if you feel that you want to, but I'm just keeping it quite rough, really. Just turn it down a little bit more to the 20%, a little bit sharper, lower end of 2%, and just go in and sharpen some of these edges a little bit, but I don't feel inclined to do too much of that. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new layer, but I'm gonna put it underneath layer six, because we're gonna use a lighter color, 
So if you imagine the distant sun, it's going to hit the back of that cloud. So all the highlights, all the reflected light is going to be reflected from the, the other side of that cloud. So I'm going to use the third colour along. It is the, the colour we did use for the background. We're going to have it at what, about 3% size and about 20% opacity. And I'm just going to start working in now bits of it here. And it's going to start emerging through just one or two of the gaps. And you start to see, especially around the edges, if you just carefully, in fact, it might be a little bit big at 3%, so I will put it down to the 2% again. And just start to follow it around some of the edges of that dark cloud that we've already created. Probably even more so at the bottom edge, because we're going to do the sun lower down. Therefore, it's going to make more of a noticeable impact on the bottom edge than it would ever do the top. And we can just create a little bit of a sense of highlight here. If you want it a bit softer, just like that cloud, it needs to obviously resemble the cloud that it's a part of. So slightly bigger and softer for these top. I feel I've done too much there. So I'll just wind that back a little bit, reduce it back down to the 2%, start adding just the bottom edge of some of these. It can extend off as well. It doesn't need to be totally contained. And we could just add a bit more of it over here too. I feel like uh, I want to create just, I don't know, a bit more of it at the top there. I'm going to dial it back to 10% again. We're on about the 5% size. And maybe there's just some hazy cloud just to connect the, the areas together a little bit. So I'm going to do just a hint of it. There's a section over here too. Again, really quite hazy. Don't need to really show that too distinctly at all. Dial it back to the 2%. Just go in there wherever you feel like it needs to have a real impact. Okay, I'm just going to go back to the layer that had the whiter colour on it, which is layer 5. I'm going to ramp that up a little bit more. And I've got a slightly more subdued white or paler colour here. It's not white, but it's a paler colour. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to keep it at the 2% size and probably about 20% opacity. And I'm just going to allow that to perhaps the lower end of two in fact, just so it can be really a bit more precise with it. Just allow some of this slightly cooler white colour just to chip in here as well. You can add to the mix, especially in this lower section. Just some stripes that seem to run through here can be really effective. Keep them fragmented though, you don't want a neat stripe. Texture is always better. I mean, in many ways, skies can appear so vastly different and change all the time. If you keep it kind of natural looking texture wise, then, you know, you have a lot of freedom, really. It's not like the proportions of a face where there's a, a more of a general sense of right and wrong. Clouds can take on so many different forms and appearances that you've got a lot more leeway, a lot more freedom to just experiment a little bit and go for what you felt like the look of. Chances are there's been a, a sky somewhere in the point of history of millions of years that has looked a little bit like the sky that you've come up with. So have fun with it. So I'm going to go to my top cloud layer, which is layer six. I'm going to press the plus symbol to go above it. I'm going to go to this yellow color next, but I only want to be quite subtle with it. So I'm going to stay on the soft brush, put it up to about 4% size and really low on the opacity at about 10%. I'm just going to build some of this yellow into this bottom section, but not a lot. Just really where we're going to start having the sun. So just slightly in this section and that, that's enough. Then I'm going to go to my top layer and again, press the plus symbol. So on this layer where it's got the little N, I'm going to tap on the N and then put it down to where it says add. So it has completely different quality now. I'm going to use this orange with my soft brush. I'm going to put it up to about 30% size and about 15% opacity. I'm going to tap a few times into the area where the sun is going to be, like that, about four or five times. And I'm going to put it up to about 45%, tap a couple more, put it up to about 50%, tap a couple more, and that's starting to get the kind of effect that we want. So I'm going to create a new layer above that. Again, I'm going to change it to add. I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to use this yellow this time, but we're going to reduce it down quite significantly. 
to about 10% size, and I'm just gonna tap a few times in that area. Two or three times will do. Then I'm gonna to go to the white. I'm gonna reduce that down. In fact, for this, I'm gonna change brush. I'm gonna change now to the medium brush. I'm gonna put that at around 4% size, not quite 100% opacity, so about 80% opacity. And just go for the center where the sun is gonna be. Tap that a few times. And we can slightly soften that in. In fact, I'll just make it a little bit bigger. We can slightly soften that in. We'll go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. And we'll just blur it in just a bit, just to merge them together a bit. It's about 10% and that's working. Create a new layer above that. Again, change it to the add. Go back to my colors, go to the yellow, reduce it down. In fact, I must be on the soft brush this time again. Reduce it down to about the 2%, actually no, about 3% but really low this time. I'm gonna put it at about 5% opacity and I'm just gonna allow a few stripes. In fact, even that is too strong. I want this to have a, a slight hint, but barely that, so about 2%. I'm just gonna bring a couple of stripes in, so obviously directed from the center of the sun outwards. It gets slightly broader as it comes over here, but then it quickly sort of disappears into nothing. A hint of this is gonna go a long way. So you really don't need to over exaggerate this at all. You can should barely be able to see this in the mix. If you press on too much, if you go over this too much, it's going to look overly stylized and cartoony. We want this to look naturalistic and realistic as much as possible. That's the kind of look that I like to try and achieve and help you get towards anyway. Something like this. Okay. I'm going to start doing some more work on the mountain layers that I've already created. So I'm going to go first of all to layer three, which had this distant mountain. And I think I'm gonna use the eraser on it slightly. So I'm gonna to go to the eraser, put it on the soft brush, put it at about 10% size, but low on the strength, that's about 20%. And I'm just gonna start chipping away a little bit just to really sell the light coming through here a bit more as well. So we want almost the mountain to begin to be consumed by the light and you don't really see the edge in this area like that. And I'm gonna do the same on the other mountain layer, so layer four. Again, we can just go in there and we can just erase the harshness of that edge just a little bit. Again, it's gonna be a little bit more consumed by the light like that, and that's working better. Now I'm gonna to switch to the smudge tool this time. I'm gonna stay on layer four. So on the smudge tool, we're gonna put it at the medium brush. I'm gonna put it down to 2% size maybe the lower end of 2%, keep it at 100% strength. And I'm just gonna work along here now, some texture, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. So there's just some distant kind of trees, and bushes and rocks that are just breaking up this top edge a little bit so we can just rough it up. And we don't have to do it all the way to the top. Certainly as we get towards the higher bits, perhaps you're just gonna have rocks instead of trees. So we can just keep some of these kind of textures for the lower sections where you're gonna get more forest and trees. Something like that. Okay, so I'm going to create a new layer. So I'm gonna to go to the top mountain layer, but I crucially want this underneath all of the light. So I don't want to go and put it on top. So I'll go to layer four, I'll click the plus symbol, and I'm gonna to go to my soft brush still, go to my colors, I've used all of the top row, I've used the first two colors, and now I'm gonna use the third and the fourth color here. And with a brush size that's around 2% and about 20% opacity, let's test that out. Yeah, you can just go in there and you can start adding some texture now. Maybe that's a little bit big in fact, so I'll put it lower end of 2%, and it's not going to interfere here. I could put it here and you see it will disappear into the light, it gets consumed by the light. Obviously I don't want it to look like that, but it means you can be a little bit more confident. You don't need to worry too much. You can just go in there and, and just breaking up the flatness again, creating the sense that perhaps there's some trees in here as well that are just catching the light. Just moving across, adding this kind of almost like pointillistic points and dashes, but the overall effect is not about pointillism. We were trying to get a realism a look but this is quite effective at just building up that kind of subtle texture that's in the haze of the glow. 
And again, we can do something very similar over this side. It doesn't have to be uniform. You can have gaps. In fact, we'll have a change of tone. So we're gonna have some trees and some rock. So this color is, is probably more representative of trees. And then we can go to this other color, which is here, which is a slightly more gray. It's actually in the red. We go to the other color, you can see it's more orange, um, although it's in the gray, so oddly it appears more green in this kind of context, but this color you'll see is a little bit more rock color almost. So it's more of a gray. And we can just add some of this in the mix as well. I'm just gonna do flatter, bigger sections of this color to maybe represent some of the, the gaps, some of the actual rock that is just emerging through. Maybe this can build into slight slopes that kind of build into sections over here. Okay, I think in addition to that color, I'm actually gonna to go to this top layer and pick that very first color, which was the darker color for the sky. So just to try and connect the, the color regions together a little bit, I'm going to use some of that color, but I'm um, again on this soft brush. I'm going to reduce it down to the 2% size and keep it low on the opacity, probably around 10% for this. And I might just bring in some of that just to represent some kind of gray of the rock textures and slopes that are just over here. I may need to go back in here with some more green as well but we can just sort of break this up a little bit with these different colors. And you can achieve quite a lot just by extending color from one area into another, and it really can go a long way in terms of connecting different areas. So think carefully about the colors that you might be able to just bring from one region into another. Things feel a little bit disjointed. It's always a really useful way of bringing things together a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna create a new layer. And I'm going to go to the next color on this middle row. So it's a really dark color now. It's almost totally black. We're going to go to the soft brush still, put it at about 3% size and about 20% opacity. And maybe I'll just start bringing in a suggestion of this down in this area. Just bring some slightly more broken, darker texture just into this. As it's slightly moving towards us, we're going to just get hints bits more of this darker color encroaching in this region. So I'll just bring this across, not too much in here. We'll bring it over here just at the bottom. We don't want to extend that up because the top bits are a bit further away. Again, not too much of that, just gets the sense. Then I'm going to put it up to about 5% size and about 40% opacity. And I'm just going to, in fact, I'm going to put it up more at about 60% opacity. And I'm just gonna decide now where I'm gonna have a different area. And I'm gonna build in this dark texture. I can just block it in for now. This is a different area on our canvas. So we can just, or our, our composition rather, in our landscape, it's much more foreground. So it needs a base color of a darker tone. Because generally speaking, things when they get closer to you, are gonna have a darker, more saturated, Color. So the blacks appear blacker and the colors appear more vibrant, unless it's the skies. It's, it's a confusing situation sometimes, but objects and their colors tend to get a bit more diffused into whatever atmospheric color there is in the surrounding areas. So if, if there's a lot of blue in the background, the color gets stripped out and gets more blue. If there's a lot of orange, it will get stripped out and get more towards the orange. Depends what's in the area. Okay, so we've got that black base now for this, which looks really nice it contrasts well with everything and we're going to start using a different textured brush so we're going to go to the artistic leatherwood brush we're going to have to seriously reduce the size of that so we're going to put it at about two percent size something like this maybe the lower end of two percent in fact we'll have it at about 50 percent opacity i'm going to go to our colors we've got a color there i've not used i might come back to it but initially i'm going to start using these colors so i've got these greens i've got that green I'm going to start applying some of this green into this lower section. So I've got some bushes, some shrubs. Now I'm changing the direction of the brush quite a bit so it can be quite random. 
and they're going to do a little bit of that over here as well not too much of this and I can then change to the lighter green as well and just a little bit here and there I don't want too much of this in fact I might use these greens for some individual kind of blades of grass more in the foreground but I just want a hint of other green things going off here in the background too go back to my colors and I've got this nice purple that I'm going to start putting down as an under color so I'm going to have some highlights on top of it but I need to have a base purple so we'll keep it at the same size for a purple in fact no we won't we'll go to the top end of two percent just before it becomes three and we'll need to turn the opacity down to about 20 percent I'm just going to start building in some stripes now I'm going to keep the upward movement for these even as I move across the canvas so I'm going to build it in kind of stripes and things like that but I'm, rather than pulling it that way I'm moving my hand that way whilst continuing to flick upward texture so don't do it left to right because the actual texture of the brush follows suit so I want them to go straight up go back to the darker color 2% size and 20% opacity and I'm just building in again some of these textures now I'm going to do bands stripes of this and I'm going to leave gaps crucially too. So they can merge together, perhaps in some places. I'll just move that a little bit. So they can move together and form bigger blocks. Maybe I'll do maybe a bit of a top edge over here as well. Probably going to go over these with some pinks and warmer highlights because the sunlight is going to catch these colours too and really reflect back the warmth and the vibrancy of that sun. So again, these textures are time consuming, but you're gonna just have to spend the time just to build up this effect, and I think it's worth it. You could always increase the size of the brush for slightly more foreground bits. Back down again to the 2%, just to build in some of those. In fact, we could even go to the lower end of 2%, just to build in those thinner bands, just in the slightly more distant. So it's all foreground we're still getting the sense of perspective so as it gets really close to us obviously it's going to get bigger and then just slightly off in the slightly more distant section of the foreground we're going to still have that sense of perspective so it is narrower okay i'm going to create another layer go to my colors and i've got this lighter purple now so again perhaps just at the top edge and being a little bit more precise now so i'm going to turn this up to about 40 percent keep it in the low 2% opacity but I can just go in now and I can just break up some of the top edge of this purple with lots of individual broken taps you've got the base purple underneath it and we're just adding over the top with a slightly lighter purple again just breaking it up so I'm doing less long or not as long a stroke now I'm doing more individual points of texture that are just the top edge of the, the purple that are catching the light. That's what I'm, I'm trying to imagine it as anyway. Now, none of this kind of texture is going to be good if you scrutinize it and zoom in. It's not really the, the point of it. It's more impressionistic. Gets you the, obviously, as I described, the impression of it without having to spend, you know, 20 minutes on each individual flower, for example. It's just creating the, the effect, really and pretty much as described the impression of it and as we get towards the bottom section you can allow some really more pronounced blobs <laughs> again not detailed but a more pronounced distinct and larger and more vibrant so all of those things together and as we get further away you're going to get smaller tiny little points that all clustered together a little bit more so less noticeable as separate shapes i'm going to add more of those points to the center area i'm just i'm holding back on that because i'm going to use a warmer color for that section okay i'm going to keep all this on separate layers so i'm again going to go back create another layer go back to my colors and i've got a darker pink which i'm going to use initially and again i don't need to be quite as heavy-handed with this i'm going to just mix in some of this pink in the mix as well i don't want to add too much of this i just want to break up the monotony of the the purple maybe add a little bit more of this in this top band in this area as well I want to feed more of this into the warmer bits over here I 
and I'll say on the same layer, I'm going to go to this lighter pink. Really now, it is on the higher opacity of 40%, so I can start building in some of the highlights now. It's really going to catch it, certainly in this middle area and slightly beyond as well. Again, I'm just trying to aim it for the top of these bands as well. So less of it as it comes over here. Again, all of the textures as they get closer to you get more fragmented. They get bigger shapes, but they get further apart. And then more of a join together of all of them as they come over to this section. Again, I'm going to create a new layer, go to my colors. Now I've got two remaining colors. Now they're really warm. And as you can see, they go from less of the blue. So it, it really goes more squarely into the red and orange. So we're on the red. And again, we can just bring some of that in. And then finally, I'll stay on the same layer for this more orangey color. And it's brighter, so naturally it's going to be really just representing the, the real strongest highlights here. So don't do too much of it over here or here. It's going to represent the area that's closest to the actual sun in the composition. And you can have one or two of them over here too. So again, they kind of line up. And I'm going to now Use a brush that I've perhaps not even mentioned actually at the beginning, but I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to go to my brushes. I'm going to go to my sketching and 6B pencil. I'm going to use this light green, put the opacity up to about 50%. In fact, that's too much. Let's put it down to about 30% and the size up to about 50%. And just in and amongst these, I'm just going to lightly start to add some grass texture. We don't need to do a huge amount of this, just in and amongst, certainly not in the distance, but just a suggestion of it here, perhaps in the foreground. You're gonna see these vibrant greens coming out because again, when we get closer to us, as the viewer in this imaginary landscape, then we're gonna notice these vibrant colors a little bit more than we would do in the distance. They kind of get consumed by the atmospheric conditions in the distance, but we are gonna notice distinct colors when they are closer to us. I don't feel like I want to do too much of that. I'm just doing it here and there. In fact, we could go back to the artistic and the leatherwood brush and we could use that with a bit of the green. So I'm gonna put it down to 20%, keep it at the 2%. And there's nothing wrong with having different textures of green in and amongst here in one or two of the gaps too, in this foreground area, especially. Just going to go back through my layers where I've got the lighter purple. So in my case, the layer 15, just with the leatherwood brush still. I'm just going to go in there with 30% strength and again that 2%. And I just want to create some slightly, in fact, I'm going to put it stronger. I'm going to put it up to about 50%. And I just want to create some slight increase in texture in some areas just with these points. And back to my layers where we've got this one, which is layer 17. And I'm gonna go back in with maybe the lighter pink color. And again, reduce size even further to lower end of 2% and about 30% opacity. And just a few more broken small points now, just to really sell the texture side of this in the very distance. And I'm just gonna go in there with the top row, third color along, just directly underneath the sun. I don't wanna to do too much of this, just a hint more of a really, really bright catching of the light there. Just to really focus our eyes into this section to reflect what the sun is doing. I'm just gonna create a new layer, go back to my colors. I'm gonna pick this dark color, which is the fifth color along here with a medium brush set at about the top end of 2% and about 40% opacity. I think I just might want to build in a little feature like a branch or something. 
I'm going to turn it down to the lower end of 2% and even narrower. I think I just, I don't know, feels like it needs some point of a feature because it feels a little bit empty. So not much. I'm going to reduce it down to the 1% for the finer details here of branches. And I'm not going to do much of this at all. I just feel like I want something to contrast a little bit with the empty scene and the, the sky. Anyway, something like that, I think that makes it a little bit more interesting. I hope you've enjoyed following along with this tutorial. If you've had a go and you want to share it with me, make sure to tag me on Instagram or join the Facebook group. All those links are in the video description. Make sure to press the bell notification button if you've already subscribed, even because you might not get notified otherwise. Catch you back here soon. See you later.